Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender 2.79 for video editing. Today, we're going to talk about how we can take a mask and combine it with a tracking marker. So in, in past videos, we talked about how we can create masks using the movie clip editor within the motion tracking screen layout. In the last video, we got an introduction on how to create a tracking marker. So here, what we're going to see is how you can take that mask, take the marker and put them together so that the mask will follow along with the marker, meaning that you don't have to do any kind of animation. Well, not a lot anyway. You might still have to tweak, tweak it here and there so that the mask still more or less covers what you want. But most of the work of animating it as, as your subject moves around within the video is all going to be done by Blender. Let's get started. You can see here uh, I am in the motion tracking screen layout. I am in tracking mode because I just finished creating uh, a marker. So uh, creating masks, as we saw before, is done in this same uh, setup. We just need to go into the mask mode. But as soon as I do that, so we can see the UI changes, but we can also see that uh, all this stuff relating to the marker is still very visible, it's still very visible, all the, the, the two boxes, the red and the blue trails. Uh, not only is it visible, it's distracting, and also we don't want it selected uh, for the purposes of doing the joining. So let's go back to tracking. And I'll just press the A key to deselect that. So anytime you have a marker that's deselected, it'll, it'll, you won't see that search box anymore. And plus, uh, it changes to like a yellow color instead of white. All right, so with that deselected, we can go back into mask mode now. And instead of using this menu like I just did, I can tell you that there's a shortcut to switch between the two. It's the tab key. So I'll just press the tab key and that brings us back into mask mode. So I'm going to create a mask. Uh, let's say for whatever reason, we don't want people to be able to see this foot of the microphone in our final video. So we'll create a mask just around that foot, uh, just a simple circle for now. Um, and because we've already covered all that in previous videos, I'm not gonna take my time doing it slowly. I'm just gonna hurry up and set it up, right? So click on new and I'll go ahead and call it uh, foot mask and I will press capital A for the add thing, uh, pop up and say circle and I will drag it over to here and maybe I'll scale it down a little bit. And that's it. My mask is complete. So now the next step is to attach the mask to the tracking marker. Um, and it's called making one the parent of the other in, in Blender speak. So it's, it's similar to what we've seen before when we do transitions in the video sequence editor, how you have to select the strip that appears first chronologically, and then you select the second strip, and then you perform the action of adding uh, the transition effect. Same deal here. The first thing we want to do is have the mask selected, and it is already. I mean, we've been working on it, uh, and you can tell it's selected because of all the the uh, the yellow coloring it has here. If it wasn't selected, if I press the A key, you'll see it, it turns to a dark, you know, black points and dark red coloring, but I'll press A again to select it. Now now the mask is selected. Um, so we select the mask, we'll select the tracking marker, and then we'll come back to the mask to finish the job. So this is selected. So that was step one, select the mask. Step two, select the tracking marker. So I will go back to tracking. And now I will just right click on here to select the tracking marker there, it's done. I could have pressed A as well. Uh, and now I can go back to mask. And at this point, this is where we have to go over to the left region and click on the mask tab. And we have to scroll around here until we see 
uh, this section here is saying parenting and we click this button that says parent or the uh, shortcut for that is control P. I'm going to go ahead and click that now and it's done. All right, so with that one click, the mask and the tracking marker are now connected. And if I hit the home button, zoom out, and I just jump to the beginning and hit the play, you'll see that it is in fact uh, linked up. Actually, let me, let me zoom that back in. So you see, there we go. There's the mask. Oh, no, it's going off screen now, but um, having that, uh, what is that? Lock to selection. There we go. You click lock to selection and now it's always in the middle. You can see it's pr doing a pretty good job. There's some parts where maybe we would want to adjust the mask a little bit. So uh, like we saw before, if you wanted to make changes to animate the mask because it's still not quite right, uh, even with uh, attaching it to the tracking marker, you can, but you have to remember to click on this button over here, this little red button, click on that so that you can see the, the set of keys there. Once that's in place, then anytime you, you make a change to the mask, it's setting a keyframe so it remembers these changes over time. All right, so let's say at this point here, I decide like um, I don't like where it is the where the mask is. It needs to be a little bit more to the left. So I'm going to start by forcing a keyframe. I'm going to press G, and then just press Enter. That just sets a keyframe right there, just to be sure that nothing's going to happen prior to this point. And now I will move uh, one frame to the right by pressing the right arrow. And here I'm going to make my change. I'm going to say actually instead of to the left, let me say I want to shift it to the right. So I'm going to press G again, and this time I'm going to move this over that way. Actually, I'm going to make it more obvious. I'm going to shift it all the way over to there. Okay, so now you can see very clearly we still have our circle the same size, the mask circle, but then this is a little bit more on the left side of it. So if I scrub from this point on, it's more or less going to be like that. But if I jump back to the beginning, it'll be more centered, right? So there it is, still centered, still centered. But then once we get to the middle point, now it's more on the left side of the circle. So that's how that's how you can you can parent the two, attaching the mask with the marker, but still have that flexibility to make uh, changes to the the position of the mask uh, relative to the marker. Okay, so that was how you can uh, take your mask and um, attach it parent to the marker. Now you can make uh, little tweaks to the position of the mask. But let's go all the way now and finish the job. Let's put this into the video sequence editor so we can see it in action. Before we do that, um, I need to do one more change to the mask and that's to click this button here, which inverts it because uh, if we use it as is, when we apply this to the movie strip, then um, it'll be just the foot of the microphone that we can see. I want the reverse of that. I want it, the foot to be the only thing that you can't see, so it gets censored out. So we'll click on that. There it is. And now I can go back to, actually go to video editing for the first time. So I'm at the first frame. I'm going to add movie. Open that up, and there's my movie. I'm gonna hit the home over here, zoom it out a bit, hit the home here, okay. And uh, we need to add a modifier to the strip. Add mask, it is a mask, and I called it foot mask. There, so if I zoom that in, you can see there it is. I mean, there it isn't, all right? So click the play button. Oops, okay, turn that down. All right, and there, there you go. So that's it. So we've covered now what we've talked about, creating masks, how you can animate the masks using keyframing, uh, how you can go a step further, get Blender to do that for you. You have it track the position of whatever it is you're trying to apply a mask to, and then combine the two, you parent the mask to the, the marker, 
And then final step, go back into the video sequence editor and add that mask as a strip modifier. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do give a like, subscribe so you can see more content when it comes, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.